three. Audio is running through the MacBook, not through our friends' usual interfaces. Testing one, two, three. Looks okay. I've spent the last half hour audio testing, A, B testing, A, B, C testing. The only thing I can get to work properly is the MacBook audio. Not so much distortion, I think. And as soon as I run it through the Zoom recorder into the video interface box, either one of them with any setting, I get that distortion that we've been having recently. Noise floor is lower. It's quieter, I think. So maybe sometimes if I'm carving here mumbling, you're not going to have what I say. I have to be careful about that. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. The Zoom recorder is fine. It works on its own. The MacBook audio works okay, but fan noise. But when you run any other audio through the major video interface card, it distorts. So what I need is I've got another USB audio interface. I can put my mic into that audio interface, but I have no more USB ports because both of them are being used by video. Anyway, 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 work. What's happening? Monday morning. Okay, what we've got today is, uh, yeah, we've got to continue carving. At the end of the last session, I pasted this down with a 3.5 out of 10 peel, but the result is still good. We will be carving this this morning. In addition to that, what else do we have? We have uh, a nice show and tell. You know what it is, because I told you about it on uh, Thursday or Saturday or something. In fact, I gave the link to a Yahoo auction. I scored a bunch of very nice match label prints. They arrived this morning. Uh, not this morning. They arrived yesterday morning. And we're going to have a look at them this morning. Cool, cool stuff. It's part of the preparation for the next David's Choice video. Courtney Gummy saying, what's that print over there? Oh, this one. I know you've seen this. This is the last batch of funnel. I showed this to you a week ago. I know Day Chan finished her batch of the number six print, and last night Ishkosa finished her last batch of number six. This is nothing to do with Chantal. This is work. This is the sixth print in this year's subscription series. If you see it again, if you like, we saw it a couple weeks ago or last week when Day Chan did the first group. I think it's really a nice, peaceful print. It's not so much about the anime, it's just nice, nice touch. You can't see, it looks kind of flat. There's a little light here. I put this light on. Yeah, it looks better here. Karpa Chonsan, this one's printed by Ishikawa, Ishikawa Yoko. Waiting for magic. Yeah, it's a nice, nice movie. It's not dramatically about the video. In fact, if you just showed this to somebody and said, "What's the theme? What's the anime?" Nobody would, uh, nobody would know. But seen as a whole, as part of the series, it is a quiet scene from one of these anime. You get post on a Sunday in Japan. Sure, why not? It's I don't know what it is. It's one of those letter packs. The one that came yesterday. It's a uh, letter pack light. Why not? We can't, we can't, the post office is closed. We can't drop mail off unless we go to the back door. But uh, mail comes. What do I think the price of these prints will be? This is part of our subscription service. It's, I think, 50 monthly. I don't remember. But they're closed. At the moment, this series is still sold out. We'll be reprinting them again probably next year. But at the moment, this series is sold out. Oh, the lamppost is floating. Yes, don't bump. Oops, I'm going to bump into it. What? <laughs> okay, let's get going. Let's get going. Let's get going. The knife is sharp and sharp. And the end of this is really, really, really sharp. Yeah, the, the, this year's series, there's a waiting list for it. If you go to the website, put something into the, you know, uh, Whatever, just send a mail to the website asking about this year's print series, the Woodblock pilgrimage, and the camera's running a mail list of waiting list.
is it possible to order something now that's being reprinted? As I said, oh, there's a waiting list for it. I mean, you can't order and pay for it. But Cameron is keeping a list of people who are have shown interest in it. It's not a pre-order. It's just a, a, a list of names of people who are interested. And when it does become available, and it probably won't be next year. It'll be a few months from now when, when it becomes available again. He just sends a, a, a note to the people saying, hi, if you want it, it's now open, so go ahead and put your order in with it or not. Okay, let's get I'm going to take my life in my hands here. I'm going to use a scope. I just put my little lens in place here. But it means I might wander too much, so keep an eye on it and let me know if you have wandered out of the way.
we had a bit of um, excitement here yesterday in the district. There was a, a fire call, fire engines came up. But you can see the place, and I just, just the floating lamppost. Behind the floating lamppost, there's a little street going down to the right, and there was a fire call down there. Mm -hmm. I was upstairs looking on something at the computer in my room upstairs. I wasn't down in the car. And mm -hmm. it was you know, the sound of fire engines rolling back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that sounds, sounds pretty close. I opened the window upstairs, and I can see you know, there's three fire trucks at this side, and a bunch of fire trucks on that side. And then what happened was really, I was shocked at what I saw next. I thought, this is Japan? What is going on here? What happened? I mean, it was a Sunday afternoon. It was people walking, people strolling, bicycles. It was all kinds of restaurants were all open. We're supposed to be lockdown, but that's not so just whatever. That's a different story. Yeah, there's people out there, just the street is kind of full of people back and forth. Well, fire trucks come running in, and the guys in all their asbestos gear get out, and they start pulling these hoses and whatever. I'm looking from my window upstairs watching what's going on. And they get to that corner, and one guy opens the manhole thing, connects a, a hose to the manhole, and fires it up, and the hose becomes full. And the, the fire crew are trying to get around the corner down that street. And there's people on bicycles and standing around and geeking. And nobody, nobody tells them, like, get out of the way. There's one woman with a bike. She gets off her bicycle, stands with her bicycle, and the bicycle is over the guy's fire hose front wheel, back wheel, and he's trying to pull and push, and there's no crowd control, and I was astonished. This is what I would expect in, name some other country, but, but not in Japan. And it wasn't until three, four, five minutes had gone by when a few guys came, policemen came from the local police box. They came on their bikes, got off their bikes, then they got their batons, okay, people, move back, move back, move back. But for the first two or three or four minutes, the fire guys were trying to get their stuff going on. And people are geeking around and getting in the way. And nobody told them to get the out of here. I was astonished. I've been here in Japan now, whatever, maybe 40 years. And I would have bet you anything I own if you would ask me to describe, okay, what would happen, Dave? There's a fire, blah, 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 blah. And I would have said, of course, all the people are going to keep out of the way and carefully let the guys do their job and all that kind of stuff. And I would have been dead wrong. Dead wrong. It turns out there was no fire. Whatever, this was a call, and they got their hose, and they got all ready and stuff like that. And uh, there was no smoke, no nothing. Nothing actually happened. I guess that's really common. You know, in fact, I can never home. But with a district like this, a bunch of old buildings back there, this building too, a bunch of old little wooden buildings cramped together. You don't fool around. If there's a fire call, they jump. They jump. So there's no, there's no press spot being inefficient there. They, they seem to do what they had to do. And maybe that was their deal. Ignore the people. Maybe that's their call. Ignore the people. Get those hoses out. Get ready for that fire. Don't waste any time. But I would have thought they would have had one or two guys, because there was... I don't know, 20, something fun. I would have thought one or two guys would have been delegated to, uh, to do the crowd control. But I guess not. I guess they leave that to the police. And if the police don't show up quite in time, I mean, they're very funny. Those strange things. I really would have, if you'd asked me to, to, to predict what would happen, I would have been dead wrong. Yeah, that's right. Put the hose on the people. That's so, that's so. <laughs> yeah, to, I, you know, whatever. Hey, if you're a fireman in this situation, everybody knows what the rules are. They have absolute authority. Maybe they don't have any legal authority whatsoever, maybe, I guess that's part of the situation, but they have social authority, of course, whatever. When a fireman says, excuse me, 
I mean, you get out of the freaking way, you know. And that might be it, actually. It might be it. Because they don't have any legal authority to actually do that, then they don't do it. You know, they consider something like complaints. I don't know if it's possible. What's this? Some of doesn't feel cute. I usually have a key block and a shin hung a knot. Mm, not really. I know Ukiyo most of the course is based on a key drawn first and then colors added. Shin hung is a little bit of a different concept. It's not outlines with colors filling in the outlines, but still for most of the shin hung prints, things like a Hasui or Yoshida, whatever, there still is an actual key drawing even though sometimes you can't see it. But nearly all the Yoshida prints, the Hasui prints, he drew a, a, a drawing first, which was cut and carved. And then on top of that, you do a color separation. It's the color separation concepts are way really different between Ukiyo and Shinhanga. Shinhanga isn't just filling the outlines. This is A, this is B, color by numbers. Which is Ukiyo is almost, almost color by numbers. But there are key blocks from most of the Shinhanga prints. And you can see the process so in, in our video channel. I've got a number of uh, videos now showing the step-by-step -step colors coming up on Shin Hunger Print, one of the Koitsu prints. Uh, we did a bunch of videos with the uh, So you can see the same thing there. She printed the key block first, the same as in the Ukiyo print, and then the coloring layers on top of that, on top of that, on top of that. There are more gradations, more color overlays, but there is still a key to tie most of it together.
where you lose your key blocks is in the not the Shinranga genre, but the So Sakura Panda genre, the creative prints, when you, the people doing original prints by themselves without craftsmen, all through the 20th century. Many of them are not using key blocks. So there might be a bit of confusion here. Cutting on the top one. It's going to be, this is going to go very quickly this morning. How long does it take to make one of these? It's uh, not whatever it's a number like that. I can't say that. If I had had nothing else to do, I think like this from from John's design. What would have been a day for the key block, a couple of days for the color blocks, it would have all been over in a couple of days. So. Now, that color, does that come behind you? What is this? Let me just pop up the design a second. I can't remember what this black thing is. That, is that a person's body pose, or is it a shadow, or what is that? That's the background, is it? And is this the shadow, so the background color should go under it, or is it under the body clothes, so it shouldn't be the same tone as the background? I'm not sure, I'm no, not sure what to do with that area. Yeah, the color we're carving here now, this is going to be the background color some kind of line, like maybe if you don't end up changing it. Should that color run under this black area to thicken it? In John's Photoshop markup on the left, the black is 100% opaque, nothing shows through it. But in real life, you won't be printing this with such a jet black. You'll be printing it with black. But the paper tone will show through. This is the person, and that's the background. What is this? Is it more shadow? But the person doesn't come rally like this to show. The person would, would, be, would be ending. If you just had a symbol, symbol line, the person would just be in something here. So it's something both. You know? Is it under the other one as well? Oh, I see, I see. So the person's going to get dark and closed. That's going to overlap. Okay, tell you what we'll do then. What we'll do is we'll take this one and we will run it under most of this black area here. And then when it comes time to carve the next one, we will make our decision on where to put the, the line here. So temporarily, quote unquote, and we run this color underneath this thing. We may end up chopping it back later if it looks strange when we do print it. It is, it's a person's torso, but, but the, the person would actually come something like this to show. And then we've got shadow into the background. So I'm going to play the safe side here. I'm going to keep this shadow. I'm going to keep the shadow for a while, thinking that it's almost certainly going to be chopped off later. Is it the shadow of his arm on his body? Yeah, it's indeterminate shadow. You know, we have shadow here. This part on the table is shadow of the hand. 
So this is shadow of whatever, something you can't see. But that's background. Where does the body end? I don't know. So I'm going to say for it. I'm going to leave it on this block with the keeping the thought in mind that we may chop it off later. Or, just a minute, plan B, plan B. What we could do, because there's a darker color coming later, we could run this light color under the whole thing here. We could here, background, here, background, run it in the shadow, run it under here, because there's a darker color coming here later. And also here. That way this block can just stay. And then we'll make our decision on what to cut off when we cut off the other one. Yeah, 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 let's do that. Let's do that. Postpone decisions for later. <laughs> But not really dangerous, not to really clearing in a few minutes with a chisel. I won't see this, so let's uh, quickly cover this up.
There is less sound from the cutting because I'm using the computer mic. The audio is really, really, really difficult. And the guest mic at the moment is turned off. It's just distorting too much. I did some, I don't want to tell the whole story again, but uh, I, I did a bunch of ABC testing this morning with the audio at different setups. And the problem in the chain is the Majewell video interface. I really don't want to say any bad things about it because it's been working fantastically. It's plug and play. It's the only video card slash interface I've ever had that's plug and play. You just plug it, video pops up. But it's having a problem handling external audio coming into the video card. It distorts. I have no way. We've tried compression settings, this settings, this settings. Yeah, I'm looking through it. I'm looking through my, what do you call it? It's one of these. It's, it's, it's normally got a, it's got its own foot normally. I've, I've ripped off the foot and I've got a little clamp on my bench. Wait, wait, wait. We did a clamp. We looked down. I've really been using the microscope too much. You know, of course I shouldn't. The microscope for this is insane. It's pointless, pointless, pointless. But I do need something to keep me in the same zone, in the same place on the desk. So the audio, I'm not sure what to do for the next step. If I recognize now that the major audio is no good, I need some other way to run audio into the computer. And this thing has two USB ports, and they're both being used. There's two video inputs coming into it. And it has a Thunderbolt connector, and at the moment that's connected to the internet. The Ethernet connection is running through the Thunderbolt. We're not using Wi-Fi for streaming. That leaves one extra Thunderbolt connector. So I could, I guess, I'll try and find an audio interface where I can plug in my Pro mic into the interface into the Thunderbolt. Then I'd be using four ports for this stream. Down by some kind of giant mixing board and mix video audio. As Dave mentioned the S and T, we do we have a very nice showing cap, very interesting showing cap. This is thrill of the showing cap to me. <laughs> I got an email. This is not recent, this is a couple of months back. I got an email note from one of the uh, one of the one of the uh, regular, regular groups, not 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 the daily group that's always there when I turn on a data card, but somebody who comes really quite frequently. So they've got a request, you know, uh, part of the world where I'm in, your stream is, is late at night. And uh, I really, really, really enjoy the show and tell part of, of your show. You mentioned the word show. This is funny too, that's another part of it. I'm not thinking that this is a show, I just turn the camera on while I'm doing my work for a while. But he, this person, you see whatever this person, was, was thinking of this as a 
show. David is doing a, a show a few times a week. Yeah, he said, I'm, I'm really, really like this. Thanks very much for doing this. Nice words, nice words, nice words. But, you know, part of the world where I'm in, it's really difficult to stay right to the end. She said, I've got a request. If you please consider the idea of moving the show and tell part of your show to the front instead of doing it at the end. Of course, because the part of the world where he's in, it's, he means he has to stay up late. So he wants to see the show and tell. Which I got to have a okay, case. Thank you. I mean, this, is all, this is all very nice. You know? But the idea was to move it to the front so this person could watch it and then sign off and go to bed. And then whatever, I, I replied something. I forget what he means specifically. But I really thought about what. What I'm thinking this is for, and what this is all about, and what other people are seeing, it's not really the same thing at all. Some, some, many of us might be seeing pretty much the same thing, and some of us might be seeing something completely different, you know. Whatever. I, myself, in no way am I thinking of this as the biggest bull show or something like this, you know. I don't produce anything, I don't get anything ready. I come down here a few minutes before, turn on the camera, as sort of a courtesy to viewers out there, people who would like to learn more about Japanese prints, not producing anything. YouTube videos, that's different. The YouTube videos are produced, at least all the ones for the past couple of years. When I first dabbled, it wasn't. It was turn on the camera, record something, and toss it out there. That was during the first trips out of years ago. The YouTube videos now are produced. I spend a lot of time. I'm getting the next one ready now. The next David Joyce number, number 11, I think it is. So yeah, those I produce, I think about, I structure, there's an architecture, there's content. But this stream, I'm not in any way thinking of this as a production. I guess if we had staff here, we could, you know, have staff meeting the day before. So what's going to be the content of tomorrow's Twitch show? And then we work it out, and we all know what we're going to do, and I've got things carefully prepared and stuff like that. But, 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 but. It's also a very common comment on this section. It's a comment that comes up on the YouTube channel quite a lot. And people say, Dave, hey, please get in touch with PBS. And you can do for them what, uh, what Bob Ross did for the years ago. And you, can, you can have a PBS show. So that gets, uh, and I, I understand why people say it, so I can see you know, there's just some similarity between what goes on. But, uh, Focus here. Okay, now here we go. We've got the, the lines are now cut, I believe. Lines. So if we move the head with this block now, it would be persuading. But what time is it? It's 8 42. If I started persuading now, smashing, 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 that's going to be a half an hour. That would use up the rest of our carving time in show and tell. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to, I'm not going to do that. It's just no fun for, for a stream to smash and smash and smash, especially when we have, we have audio problems. So I'm going to put this aside right now because we have member. There's four colors. We have to do one more. So let's, uh, let's wrestle you and me together. Let's wrestle with the next final of the four of the four color separations, figure out where to draw it, and then paste it down, have a peel, and then see where we get with it. And then what I would probably do is I'll do the persuading off camera, and when we come to the next stream, I'll be doing the quiet part of the of the remodel. So let's do this. Let's. You guys get. 
Oh, you guys are so good. Twitch stream. Hey, you guys. The wood band-aid on one of the blocks for this print was interesting. The wood band-aid. You need a repair we did? I'm not sure what you mean. The repair? We did a repair, which actually has turned out to be another business. Thanks for it. Is that what we're referring to? You can see it now, actually, now that it's been printed a couple times. There's two repairs here. You see one, a little tiny circle. That's basically invisible. We drilled a hole, put a piece of wood in and it. And the second one, I was really clumsy with it. I inserted a, put it on here. I inserted a, can you see it? I don't know, I inserted two pieces because I'm so clumsy and careless. One piece runs up here. And then because I didn't get the joint ready at the end, I smacked another piece in. I smacked another piece in across the end of it. And, and the finished print, these will be absolutely invisible from the finished print. So. Okay, let's bring this up. Here we go. Okay, ah, oh, there it is. There's the one we are going to do now. So we're going to draw some stuff here. Okay, without wanting to belabor the whole thing, the stone here at the bottom has an undertone, whole thing, and this one now. We just need to do something at the top here so it looks like light, light at the top. I think what John has drawn here is not anything. You know, I don't have to follow this curve back here. You just need something. So I'll be doing a highlight on top of that. And as you saw, this area gets it. And we have to decide where to. And what I'll do, I'm going to overlap the whole black area. And after test printing, we will see which way to cut these two down. And what else? Is that it? No, there's a scissors handle. And here, I really don't know quite what to do. really don't know what to do here. So let's, again, the base. We'll put the same thing on that we did in the previous one. And then we'll cut some highlights. Here. So the same thing we did. And John has asked for some highlights. Just now, get to the bowl in a minute. Hang on, hang on, hang on. One thing at a time. What's asking? Do I have any hobbies other than hobbies other than printmaking? Printmaking is not up. <laughs> Everybody's answering for me, are they?
it's a, it's actually it's not a it's not a it's not an awful question at all. Before we started the Asakusa shop, I did have other activities in my life. Before, so if you go back, we started the shop in 2014. I mean, also in my life, I've done lots of different things. There was stamp collecting and stuff, hobbies when I was a kid, of course. But as an adult, if you go back to before we opened the shop, I can't talk and do this at the same time. I know something really is. Really is. Let's see what John's got. He wants those. So, uh, okay, 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 Johnson. Got... What is the blob with highlights to the lower right of the baron being tied? It's it's a stone. Well, it doesn't show well here. I'm sorry. It's a stone. I know. Uh, I don't have an image I can show you, and I don't have one handy at this carving bench. If you think of this black, kind of a black stone, it's common in some kind of river beds. A black stone that would fit, nestle into my hand. Really hard, really shiny, it's been polished by the river action, and we use those on the back of the barren skin to soften it up when we're tying it. I mean, it it's nobody is gonna know what it is in this picture. On my website somewhere, if you uh whatever, it's on woodblock.com, there's in the encyclopedia, there's sections about tying the barren. There's photographs there. It's a polished stone and polished by, by river action. And there's a place here in Tokyo where you can write to me privately and I'll let you know where we can get from here in Tokyo. I'm not about to put public information and go and steal it from this garden in Tokyo. But I know where you can get some if you're not near the river here in Tokyo. But okay. Now, we've got the bowl, the bowl, the bowl. Hello. The bowl. And the conversations, I'm sorry, too many conversations, too much stuff to do, you know, before I opened the access shop. I did have other activities, other than printmaking, too specifically. I used to go, quote, camping all the time. This is Japanese camping, this is not Rocky Mountain, blah, blah, blah. But I went, uh, I took my tent and backpack out, out there, three, four, five, six, seven times a year. 
up to the time when I, I hired people and opened the Asakusa shop. And once the shop came up, and that was it, that's the end of everything else in life. And, and something else I used to do, I used to, it was kind of a hobby, I guess. I used to do a weekly podcast slash story, an essay, a little essay, um, and record it. And it was like a little podcast. I was even in the Apple podcast list there for a while. And I did 500 episodes, 496 episodes before uh, before uh, losing losing it. The okay, fish gill and tail shadow. Are there shadows under the fish here? I don't know what it's time. Let me make this a bit larger. Again, I've cut those out. Sorry about getting in the way here, excuse me. Sorry, excuse me, sorry, I just had to get a bigger to see what was going on. talking about it's like it's a fish you know it's flat it's not a fish you know it's a ceramic thing are we there Yeah, Hashioki, so yes, that's what they're called. Are we there again? Anything missing? Nothing here. Get some dots. I'm not sure what the size of this one is, so I'm trying to match it up with the previous one we did here. I 
think we'll cover this a bit larger than like that. The top dumpling. Does the top dumpling have anything on this one? I don't see anything. Is there a shadow underneath it? Is that a shadow? I don't know. What do it is? It's right here on the corner line here, so I'm making this larger than I think it should be. This thing, you know, yeah. This is out, in, out. So this is in, out, in. I think, okay, this one I've made here is larger than what John has got. And we will cut this back. Let's bring this one up even more. Just to make sure. I'll bring these two dark shadows large than what John has drawn, and I will cut back after we've done a test printing. In the shadow, the chopstick shadow is on the table. And the chopstick shadow is on the hashiyoki. But does it get smaller here or does it get bigger? John has just drawn it straight through. Let's make ours a little bigger. Ready to go. Let's do this. We can fool around all day. Let's do this. Wood. And the back of the one we were just working on is open. The corner is really wrong. It's strange. The corner is really strange. As I said, I've cut too much, and they're going to overlap too much. We will cut it back after I test point. We have a defect here, a really strong, hard knot. It's going to fall in that hand. We have another defect here. If this was a flat color, that would show up. It's going to fall in this area here, so it'll be chopped out. Does this color need to be in the shadow of a tying hand? No, because this print breaks into two groups. There's the lilac and blue dark group that we're doing right now, and then there's the skin tone brown group. And the table and the table shadows are going to be in the other group. So if I put this one into the shadow of the hand, we would get real mud, real dirty mud. So we've got the black from the key block, and it's going to pick up the table color, and we may have done it on both of them, I don't remember at this point. Which one did it get? It looks like it's getting nothing, it's just getting the table color. But we don't want to overlap this one, as I said, because it would just be real total mud. There's two groups in this print, and we're going to keep it separate. I think those are the only main defects. This should be okay. Let's get this done. This is the last color. This is it.
So what will happen is the next couple of days where I'll be finishing the carving of this, it will then go upstairs for a test printing. I'll ask Renee Chan to do a test print of it. And then out it goes to the printers. Now we're going to need about five, six, seven hundred of these over the course of the year. And we, do, we don't do those all at once. We'll run up a couple of hundred first. I think Kubo decided it's going to do it first. And then the printers will take turns doing a hundred or so each over the course of the next few months. Once it's out of my desk, my next job, it's already overdue, I have to do the next share certificate for the Patreon people. If you remember how we do the share certificates, they are inkjet printed, the body of the thing, but every one of them has a small woodblock zone on it as well. And I need new share certificates for 2020. So I'll have to do that job sometime in the next couple of weeks. The other day when I did this, I used too much glue, clearly, I have a problem with peel, so today I'm probably giving me not enough. <laughs> Actually, this peel is a story, it's a funny, funny side so I can't tell you this guy's name. Back when I was a music student in Vancouver, I was, uh, my goal, one of my goals at that time was to join the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra. I was going to be, you know, a flute player at Vancouver Symphony Orchestra. It never happened. I fled the audition and to When I was a music student in Vancouver, there was a professional orchestra in town. And one of the players in the orchestra, he was not a flute player, nothing to do with flute. One of the, in fact, I won't even mention the, guy, the, the instrument because it really wouldn't be fair because he's probably out there somewhere still. Anyway, one of, the, one of the professional players in the orchestra at that time was playing a certain instrument, and the, the orchestra was asked to play bolero, Ravel's bolero. And if you know that, it's, it's an interesting piece, and it also has lots and lots and lots of chances where you feature a specific instrument. Instrument A has a solo through one, one run of the, of the theme, and then it goes on some more, and another instrument is featured, and another instrument is featured, and so on, and so on, and so on. This particular guy, one day, before my time, one day, the story had started before I was involved with this, he had been in the concert, whatever, and he had flubbed his solo. He was playing his part in the solo, and he had flubbed it. Okay, whatever happens to musicians, I guess the other people in the orchestra probably look around or don't look around or freeze or whatever. So be it, so be it, so be it. So it turns out what happened was the guy then, next rehearsal, next concert, he's really nervous about this coming up. He's nervous about this thing and he flubs it again. The long story short, this became a thing with him. He developed a real psychological problem with this and he was unable to play that solo but kept getting assigned. And when I was a student at university there in Vancouver, I had tickets to the VSO, to the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra, and they played Bolero all the freaking time. And this guy, those of us who knew the story, music students, we were in on all this stuff that's going on. And we sit there and wait, here it comes, here it comes, and he cracked it. And every single time he cracked it. And I think it was either that year or the next year, he quit. 
He got out of town. He went back to America where he came from. He'd been an import musician from the U.S. Back in those days, there weren't too many. I mean, there was lots and lots of American imports in all the Vancouver, in all the Canadian orchestras. But I remember that story. He had just, you know, the guy must have, it just must have filled him with terror. Here comes the solo again. Even though he was a totally competent professional musician, that one, that one killed him. So here we are. They've spoiled the last peel. Tension, tension, tension. Yeah, Ravel Polaire. So, so, so. I remember the guy. He was older than me. You know, I was at that time a student, but he was an adult, a professional adult in New York. So I'm 68 now. So he must be retired now. Whatever. I don't know if he if he quit playing his instrument or if he just just got out of town to start fresh somewhere else without this this sort of cross. To bear. I don't know. It was terrible. My God, we wait for the thing to come, and here it goes, here it goes, and crap. I guess all the other frozen in the orchestra, they, they know this is coming, they wait for his solo to come. No jinx. <laughs> John Becker's really quiet here right now. Is he there? Oh, he's, <laughs> oh, he's there. I don't know. Flute. I was flutist. I think F L A U T. Flautist. Flautist. He was too pretentious. I was a flute player. Just a flute player. A would be flute player. I was good, but I didn't have what it takes to survive in that environment. I went for my audition. The, the, my teacher, the piccolo player in the, in the orchestra, died. Conrad Crocker died. And they had auditions for it, and uh, I destroyed myself. I just destroyed myself. I knew I was the one they were going to pick. I don't need to work on this. They're going to pick me. Anyway. It's okay. I was immature, stupid, and I destroyed myself in that audition. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay. Yeah. Back to work. How's our time? 9-11. Okay, so a few minutes carving here, and then let's have our show and tell. What's this? Bolero, beautiful symptom of a terrible disease. That's the trombone guy. What? What, 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 what? Is his story public? Okay, whatever. I, I don't want to mention names and stuff because this was a real cross for this guy. The last thing I want is to put, you know, put this out in public. I mean, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it happened to more than one person like this. Oh, so. well, this is a softy piece of wood. Find that story about the Bolero, you know, because because of those episodes back then, 
it seems impossible now. Every time I hear that thing, we put the head on. Since we've closed the shop, we've been using actually the background music somehow. And when I'm parking here one day when the stream is not on, I've actually put on some uh, background music. And I just throw up an internet radio sometimes at one of those classical stations. And when that bolero comes on and I hear that solo getting closer and closer and closer, I cannot forget the story. I feel for that guy. And here it comes. Oh my god, he's just shitting himself and here it comes, here it comes. It must have been crazy. That's your job, your career, and you have to be able to do that one specific thing. I don't know. You know suppose they say we have joked about this to feel. Suppose it becomes the same thing for me. You now, now, for me, it's no problem. If I had to have problems with this, I just wait in private when nobody's watching. It's okay. But when your whole job happens out in public, you can't hide anywhere. It must have been a terrible, terrible thing. So it's not a, that's a terrible story. A lot of background white noise. The fans are running in the background. I'm using the laptop mic. Nine sixteen. Nine sixteen. Let's do this. Let's do this. We have too much show and tell. Let's do this. Carving the weight for next day. Clear the decks. Clear the decks. We have a good one. You know what this is? I posted about it the other day. Mask. There's a package dropped in my mailbox yesterday. And it's been open because I know I had to do the, the escrow thing. That's become really common on Yahoo auctions here. When you buy something from Yahoo now, I know I, I hadn't really been hip to this, but when you buy something from Yahoo auctions now, it comes and what I was doing was, you know, opening it, whatever, whatever, whatever. And three or four days later there would be a, an email from the seller saying, Please, please click the button that says you've got it. And I was like, What's going on? What's going on? And it turns out it's escrow now. All the payments that run through the Yahoo system are escrow. And until you tell the, the system received all okay, he doesn't get paid. So I now when we get something, when we receive a package that we've got through Yahoo Auctions, I'm going to open it, check it, and bang. So I can't do any more unboxing. I should have fooled you. I haven't looked at this, but uh, I have actually looked at it. Okay, we have some match table prints. There was a guy, this was Friday night, right? Today's Monday. No, Saturday night. Saturday night. There was a bunch of them came up on Yahoo Auctions, a bunch of the match table prints. And I wanted one specific set. I really, 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 really wanted one specific set. And the other ones were, okay, if I get them, that's fine. I get them. It turned out I got, he had like 12 packages up, and I got six of them. And I linked it. I linked it. So let's look at some of these. I didn't get all of them that I wanted, but I got the one. We'll save that. It's at the bottom. Yes. Okay, let's have a look at some of these. These are early Showa or late Taisho. If I was going to guess, we may see some dates coming up here. Some of these are dated, and I would guess Showa, Showa 8, somewhere around there. Showa 8. What's with the poster? It's wrapped in. So, I don't know what this is. What is this? You tell me. It looks like some famous artist. No idea. No idea. Goodbye. We have a set of 12 of the match. I gotta do this quickly because I haven't left this too long. 
This is really short or late Taisho. And it's 12, and our Bijin Juni Sugata, and our beauties, 12, 12 views of beauties. And it's a, this is the summer theme. And I've got some others in a similar series to this, and they are different seasons. This is the summer series. Yeah, John's got show eight. I'm just guessing, John, and I don't quite know what this is. Some of these may have dates, and he's wrapped them all up. Okay, better than that. And here we are. Let's have a look. These are woodblock prints. They've been pasted into an album. So we've got some backing sheets on them. But let's see if we can zoom in. No, it's not from behind. It's not after. It's a sugata shape. I know the the a view of a person. I know. I know how would you use that word? I know. I know where I heard it. I know the the video that Watanabe has of Hasui, his last print, and after Hasui dies, the woman's over the woman's narration at the end and says, "I know sugata mo mienais. We will not see that person walking through our village doing sketches anymore." So this is this is. 12 sugata, whatever, shape, people. Someone's asking, is that embossed? There's, well, there might be a bit of embossing on the fan, I'm not quite sure, but embossing in the, the fact that they're woodblock prints, and when you do print with woodblock, you get bumpiness. They are nicely done. This is not great work. Oda is the name of the guy who would have sponsored this set here, and may, he may have done sketches, I'm not sure. And this is not the finest quality Hosho paper to study to time. Is that a bat? I think that's a bat, right? This is a summer evening. The bats are out catching mosquitoes. This is a riff on Shinsui. So we know the Shinsui print. Or or Shinsui riff this one. I don't know. I don't know which came first. This looks like a riff on a famous Shinsui Shinhunga design. These are all summer, and they're all summer, and the kimonos are all, uh, they're not kimono, they're yukata. The lady will have her yukata back to the bath, and here it is, which is back from the bath. They're nice, they're nice, very, very, very pleasant. Such a small scale, but beautiful, the expression is just so nice and peaceful. It could have been a larger scale shinhaga print, huge investment, or it could just be small, and very nice set, and it's also very nice to have the whole set of 12. I've got some of these already as individuals, but now I have the whole set of 12. And what did that cost? Let's see if I go to my Yahoo option page. This one, set of 12, uh, 2,300 yen. I think a nice little deal. I'll take that any day of the week. Who goes to rub it in? Yes, Rob, Rob, you could have bid. This was a public open auction. Anybody could have bid on these things. Okay, the next one. Now, the previous collector must have put these in some kind of album, and the guy who, who put them on auction cut the album up. And this really pisses me. He cut the album up and took page by page by page into auctions and just give me the album. But of course, when they sell it by page by page, they get much more money for it. If this had been a 50 page album, the number of people who could have bid a thousand dollars for it is not so many, but if you splash it up in the difference, the people who could pay a hundred dollars and pay just up are much, much more. Okay, what's this? This is uh, what have we got here? These are in the snow. Oh, there's a title. Oh, Meguro. It's it's a hake. Hey, can we zoom, zoom, zoom? This is Meguro hake. It says here, and this would have been vermilion. This is hugely, hugely oxidized. The, the color one. It's Meguro Hake, and that would have been a vermilion color, and it has now turned to a sort of a dark, a dark, uh, a dark red rust. It might have been tan, the color called tan. So it's the same thing here. These would have all been red or tan first, and now they're all totally, totally oxidized. I guess this must be eight scenes of places in Meguro, a district in Tokyo. 
This is not high, such high quality stuff. It's nice, but uh, and again, nice to have the whole set. You could research the places, find out what they are. Let's move on because the highlight, the highlight, the highlight. Okay, here we are. There's two more go, two more sets. This set is supposed to be 12. Wait, wait, I bit over oh, here down here. I bit on the set 12. And these are imitations. Okay, the date. It says show eight. Show eight. Uh, oh, summer. Uh, Summer, uh, summer ice hats. What do you do? Well, we, we send New Year's cards to people at New Year's time. Also, sometimes you would send a summer, uh, a summer greeting card to people in the summer. And this is a series of summer, summer views. And they're done in the shape of an Uchiwa, a, a Japanese Uchiwa fan. So this will be 12 designs again for the summer. Same as that, that woman set was a summer woman set. And they're just, they're little classic scenes, very, very, very small scale. You hold the same, they all done with the same tones. They would have been printed on one sheet of paper all together and then cut apart. Well, they're, they're sets. They're not sold. These were collectors. I know the collectors group organized their sets and commissions. These were not stuff that were sold in shops at all. These were collectors groups. And it was their hobby to conceive of sets like this to have them organize, collect money from everybody in the group and pay a printmaking workshop to carve them and print them. And sometimes the designs would have been done by the guys in the group, or sometimes the guys in the group would do quick rough sketches and they would just send it out to, uh, to the workshop. We do have descending geese, nay. I don't think we'll find all eight of the classic views here. It's possible. We might have, you know, there might be returning sales. I don't see any rain or snow. So I don't think they specifically, it's a set of 12 rather than a set of 8. The usual goal was about 200 copies. The guys in the, in the group would shoot for 200 members to pony up their money together. And once they had their 200 members, bang, the production would begin. And they would come back to the workshop. They would chop them up and split them out into a I don't know what pigment that is. I know my guess is it's not a purple pigment. It's something in the printer's workshop. They would, they would uh, print it up. I don't think it's overlaid. I think it's mixed in a bowl. Yeah. No idea. Once you get into the 20th century, all bets are off. They could have used anything. They would have mixed in a bowl some blues, some reds, and some black. This is not a traditional color at all. Okay, now let's get to the meat here, the one that I really, really wanted to bid for. I bid, I won't tell you how much I bid because I was willing to pay much, much more for it. It turned out the next guy in line wasn't willing to pay for much. And I got this at 3,100 yen, which is like $30. And I would have paid more for this. You know the Tokaido series? You know the Tokaido set? The 53 stations of the Tokaido resulting in 55 prints from Nihonbashi down to Kyoto. Before Hiroshige did his Tokaido set, people were traveling up and down, up and down, up and down. And there was a very famous story called Hizakurige. In English, we usually translated it, it back in the Victorian era, it was first translated as shanks mare, means walking, using your own legs instead of, uh, instead of uh, riding. And there was a joke, a parody, a comedy story written about traveling in the Tokaido. Uh, everybody now in Japan knows him. It's Kita and Yaji. I don't remember their full names. We know them as Kita and Yaji, Shanks Mare, two jokers who went down the Tokaido and just destroyed the world around them as they went. They were idiots. It was uh, just slapstick comedy from 1810, somewhere around there. The book was written 1810, 1815, early 1800s. This book was written and published. By the time Hiroshige went his trip down the Tokaido, this was already famous. So what we have here, this is done, this will be again, it'll be Showa Air, Showa 8 or something. There's no date, even on the last one. So I have no date on this, it's the same kind of era. Late Taisho, early Show. The Two Stooges, yes, that's exactly it. It's two jokers 
falling all over themselves, doing totally, totally. Some of it is sort of they they chase women, and some of the story is you don't want to tell your kids about this, but whatever. It's it's two jokers. So what we have here, this set of of match label, the hobby group for making match label. This is Odesan, one of the main leaders of these groups. They said, let's do a Tokaido set, and someone said. So it's 55, but it's going to be too expensive. I can't afford that. He said, well, how many of you want to do this? And enough hands went out in the group, or they took their time, took their time. They collected the money from 200 people in the group and commissioned a set of Hizakurige. And it's from Nihonbashi all the way down from Shinagawa to Kawasaki to Kanagawa, all the way down the whole Tokaido, illustrating joke episodes from the Hizakurige. And I really, really, really wanted to get this. I have got one or two of them that I've got in random albums, but this was the first chance for me to get the complete set. This is not great art, it's not great literature, it's not great anything, it is just a ton of fun. Some of the episodes, you know, they're on this... <laughs> Lots of the took out of this river crossings, you know, they go across the river, there's no bridges. The, the government said no bridges, we are not going to build bridges here, because they didn't want the, the highways to be so good that that, that people could come and attack the, the, major, the major city of Edo. So travel was difficult but possible. So all the river crossings were done with little ferries or guys carrying them. And Yaji and Kita, they're on one of these little ferries and it's a little river crossing and the wind doesn't blow and they're stuck and it takes a little while and they're still stuck. And he says, I gotta pee, man. I gotta pee. What am I gonna do? Well, I gotta pee. And his buddy Kita says, look, there's just this, there's this piece of bamboo there. It's okay, just so that he gets the bamboo closer. It's like having a, a, a bottle, you know, an empty pet bottle in the cab of your car. You can pee into this bottle, you know, so he pees into it, puts it quietly back to where it was. And it turns out what this is, this bamboo, is it's the next guy's, it's his portable drink. You keep your, your drink in a, set, in a piece of bamboo and with a cap on the top on you. So <laughs> it's this kind of a total stupid slapstick kid's humor. It's, it, when you read it, it's sort of funny to hear one story like that, but you read it again and again and again and again and again. It just is, it's not actually all that funny. But this is 1820s version of Slapstick Human. And now we have the set of Yaji and Kita. I'm really, really happy. Let's just zoom and try and get together in some of this. And I don't know all the stories. I read it from years and years ago. I don't remember all the stories. They cheat people, they lie, they break stuff, they trip over things. They just, you know, oh yeah, here's, they, they do, they, they destroy one of the baths. This is a Guayamon Budo. And in some old days, some of the, the uh, you got to heat the bath from below with fire. So you can't have a wooden bathtub because it burns up. So what they had was they had wooden tubs with a sort of metal plate tied and inlaid and then set up in the bottom. Or we, you've got the metal plate over the, over the fire, and on top of this, you've got your barrel sealed with plaster or something. So these guys, they're from Edo. They've never seen one of these before. They have no idea what's going on. So it's all prepared for them in this thing. The first guy gets his clothes off, jumps in, puts his feet on the metal at the bottom. What you're supposed to do is there's a wooden top to these things. And you, you get in and you push the wooden top down. And I've done this in my early days in Japan. You push the wooden top down floating, and you sit there in the bath, and your feet don't touch the metal plate. So this joker takes the wooden top off, jumps in the bath, and, oh my god, his feet go on the metal plate, he burns, he jumps out, whatever. Long story short, how am I going to do this? He hunts around, finds some clogs, some wooden clogs, gets on those, gets in the bath and starts dancing. And of course, the clogs break the wooden, the, the metal plate at the bottom, and away you go, away you go, away you go. It's available in English, so Tuttle has it, but the thing itself, this is another one of those copyright deals. The English translation you're seeing there in that Tuttle book was done in 1907. I don't know these dates. It was done in the in long, long, long ago. So Tuttle's version of it is copyrighted. Their book is copyrighted. But the text, the story, is from 1907. There's no copyright on the text. But Tuttle keeps republishing, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. So the thing itself is not in copyright. The, in, the Japanese story is not, and that English translation is not. But Tuttle's book is copyright. If someone wanted to scan it and put it in Gutenberg and something, whatever, it's it's public domain material. I don't remember the stories, I'm sorry. I don't remember the stories. Someone's inside there with a pipe smoking. I don't know the story. There's stories about toilets, there's stories about just just whatever. 
everything possible that these two guys could joke around with. They joke around. They destroy stuff. What's this one? He was sleeping up in the roof. I don't remember. I'm sorry. And they go on and on. The title that appears in every this is the guy's name, this is Odus. This is Oda. It's not the title, it's the sponsor's name. He's the guy who roped all his friends in. And maybe he actually put in a ton of money for this. He's quite famous to collectors like us. I've got his name on many, many, many of these prints. See, he had the group of these people. So Oda would have been the principal sponsor for this. And it's possible he paid for the whole thing because his name is on every single one of these. And what we have here, we have the numbering. This is Sono Jusa. This is number 13. And then we have the name of the place. Some of these I can read. This is Hara, number 14. Hara. These are the name, names of the stations. Not all of which I can remember. The first ones I know absolutely very well. We have Hara. We have this says. We have Bashi, number one. Sono Ni is Shinagawa. Sono San is Kawasaki. Sono Yon is Kanagawa. They go on and on and on. Let's skip to the end. And at the end, we have Kyoto. This is number 55, Kyoto. I don't remember the story, the joke. I don't know. This is Otsu, the town before Kyoto. He's choking on something. Anyway, there you have it. It is great fun, great fun, great fun. I'm really happy to get it. And for 3,100 yen, I can live with that hit to my pocket. I can live with that hit. So, Sanjo Bridge, the one in Kyoto. So, somebody saying you don't need any text. Everybody knows these stories, of course. Absolutely. The people who, the collectors of this, of course, they have read that book. They know what's going on. Absolutely. So. Okay, I think that will do us. We've run a little bit over time here, no big deal. There was actually, there was one more set. Ah, too many Let's Let's do this. We're here. Two more minutes, doesn't much matter. This was also one more of the prints put up in an auction, and it's a little bit incomplete, but it's unusual. It's the Junjo Zuri. It's the step-by-step -step printing of one of those little tiny match label type prints. And I don't know, it's a, a it might have been a privately commissioned one. This is probably a company symbol. And we have part of a Jinjo Zuri. We have the key block by itself. We have, the next one has two colors. It's got an orange-brown color, and it's got a pinkish color undertone there. So there's actually two steps in one there. Then we jump over to here, and it's got, we should zoom in here. So. It's got those two colors plus some blue on this bollard or whatever it is. And then it jumps back here, and we've added a blue sky and water. And the next one jumps here, it adds a, a mountain color. And then these last two, they seem to me actually to be the same. There's a, a red on the boat with a gradation. And this seems to me the red on the boat with a gradation. I'm not quite sure what they've done here. So it's a partial set of what you would call a junior reserve step-by-step painting. Same year, absolutely, 1930s, this is pre-war. And is it, so if somebody's saying sank at the pier, is it the way they've drawn this or what's happened here? I don't get it. I don't get what's actually happened. This is not great art in any way whatsoever. It's, I think it's just the bizarre perspective. They wanted to show the town in the background. So I don't think it's sunk, so I don't know. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. Okay, let's put let's put Yaji back, Yaji Kita back to finish off. Okay, there we are. Okay, okay thanks very much. Getting a bit too long today. This is Monday. <clears throat> the next stream will be Monday, Tuesday, Monday. Thursday morning, three days from now, I will be probably carving away on those Patreon chibi prints, or if I've had got those out of the way, we will maybe be working on the Patreon share certificate print for next year. I don't know. Day by day, our life here now, I tell you, it is busy, busy, busy. Our shop 
his history. It's dead for years to come. We don't know about that. But online, we're, we're doing very, very, very well. Jed's son is helping hugely. We're shipping to America. We're shipping through Jed's house. He's doing a really good job shipping for us. European shipping is still mostly okay. Uh, some countries are shut down. We can't ship to But most of our online business is going okay. The printers are all busy. The carvers are all busy. Money is just barely hanging in there. We're okay. Subscriptions, of course, are down because a lot of people have lost their jobs. But we are, at the moment, basically okay. So please don't worry about us. We're fine. I'm busier than I've ever been. So much to do now without the peripheral staff to help me with this. So we are okay. History of the shop, again, I don't want to talk about it now. There, there is no shop. Print parties are history. It'll be years before this comes back to me. But Mokahanka as a whole is okay. I spent a bunch of time last night working on the next script, script for the next video, which will be about the Tokaido. <laughs> okay, thanks, stuff. Back on Thursday. See you then. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye. Oh, first cat's coming soon. Do a website near you. Soon, 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 soon. She's printing 100 copies right now. Cats are up and running. Bye for now, guys.